Hey guys, it's Renessa for this base inspired earrings. I'm going to be using this uh, porcelain clay. It's kind of clay that hardens with air. But if you prefer to work with polymer clay, feel free to do that. The results are pretty much the same. Although uh, polymer clay, you have to bake it. This one, you don't. I'm going to be using a round cookie cutter that is about one inch or three centimeters. Then I'm going to be using a baking tool. This is a Wilton 12, but I'm going to be using that part as a cookie cutter actually. I'm going to clean that after. I'm going to roll my clay using my clay roller with rings on the edges. Those green things are there just so that I have the same thickness all around my clay. They are pretty easy to make. But I'm going to be cutting two round mini circles and two big ones with the cookie cutter, two of each. With the tiny ones, I'm going to be making balls or just round figures. And with the big one, I'm going to be making a teardrop shape. And this is how I'm doing this. First starting like making this round and then just making it flat towards one edge like that. It's actually really easy, but it takes practice. This is the second time that I did it because the first one was looking a bit weird. But, you know, practice makes perfect. Once I have my uh, teardrop shape that I like, I'm going to be letting them dry. Then I'm going to be using a couple of pins just so that I can handle everything uh, easier. I'm going to be placing my pins on my tiny pieces of clay. I did the same thing with the teardrop shapes, although I just forgot to record it. Yeah, I let those dry again. You know, with this kind of clay, when the shape that you're making is a bit chunkier, it takes more time for the shape to dry. This is how I'm letting this to dry because I don't want the shape to get smooshed or just ruined. I just placed my Wilton 12 inside my cookie cutter and just let those dry there. Once everything is dry, I gave them overnight. I'm just going to be painting this using this gold acrylic paint and pretty much going to be painting in the small round shapes that I have there, giving them two coats until it was like opaque in gold. And this I'm letting it dry in a tiny piece of block of foam. And whenever I tell you I'm letting it dry, this is what I'm doing. Then I'm going to be using my yellow and my brush, painting my teardrops, which are going to be kind of like the shape of my bee. Even giving this, it depends on like how the opacity of the paint that you're using, but I gave mine around four coats. The good thing that it dries fast, so you don't have to wait a long time. Then I'm letting it dry. Then as far as for the design itself, I made, well, two sketches here. One has one line in the middle and then the other one has two lines. The one with the one line looks cleaner, but I think the one with the two lines looks more like B to me. But, you know, it's pretty much personal preference. Add as many lines as you want. Once I decide how many lines I'm going to add, first I'm going to mark where I want them using my pencil. And then just, you know, making strokes, small strokes all around until I have the lines. And I would choose to work with a pencil because if you make a mistake, you can just erase it. It's really easy if you just take your time and go slow. And just to make sure that both have the same lines, kind of like in the same place, I'm going to be placing my one with the lines next to the other and then I'm going to base myself from what I see on the other one. To paint this, I'm going to be using this black acrylic paint and this brush, that is not even a brush, it's like a, kind of like a sponge brush thing. I get this actually at NYX or NYX Cosmetics uh, store. You can try like makeup and stuff and I found this uh, sponge brushes and I grabbed a couple of them. They are for free though. I just took about a couple of them and I'm going to be using this to paint the stripes of the bees but I think a toothpick works just as fine. You know going really slow in this part I took my time I really took my time first working on the like bottom part and then once that was dry I went with the other lines. Working at one spot at a time I didn't try to rush and finish the whole thing at once because then you get fresh black paint all over the place and you have to pretty much do the whole thing all over again. And yeah, I'm letting it dry. Then I decided to make this nice and shiny. And for that, I'm using this glaze gloss by Sculpey and my brush. And I'm going to be adding a few coats, uh, letting it dry in between coats. It's going to be making the whole thing look better, in my opinion. I know bees are not shiny as is, but I think it looks better in these earrings. Then I'm going to assemble the whole thing. I'm going to be using some cutters, some pliers while I used my super glue. And I'm going to be pretty much removing first the pins. And then to make these earrings, I'm going to be using a couple of ear posts, cut disc part, gluing that. For the body of the bee, I'm going to choose the best part, like the part I like the most, because that's going to be like the front part. And once I decide, I'm going to be gluing the whole thing. But yeah, guys, these are the earrings that I want to share with you. I honestly love them. I think they look so unique. 
And they add something really interesting to any outfit. I have to say, whenever I'm feeling a bit funky -er, <laughs> or just yeah, I want to wear something like a small statement, I wear this. They are pretty lightweight. They're really easy to make, actually. The original idea is not mine, by the way. I got inspired from like some earrings that my cousin was wearing and I just wanted to make my own pair and share them. And I really hope you liked them. If you did, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. Check out more earrings that I have on my channel. Subscribe for more. Let me know what you think of these ones and share this. Thank you so much for watching. I'll talk to you later and take care. Bye.